If you're currently an engineering student or you're an engineer, you know how hard studying engineering is in university. There's an overwhelming amount of material and theory we have to learn and remember. While juggling projects, internships, extracurricular activities, and having some semblance of a social life, you've probably found yourself pulling all-nighters just to cram or relearn all of the material that you've forgotten right before an exam or interview. Cramming is both stressful and time consuming and although it can make a difference you'll find that all of that knowledge you gain goes out the window right after the exam or interview but what if i told you there's actually a way to maximize retention so that you remember all of the things you learned the first time and that they are permanently ingrained into your memory this way you don't waste time simply relearning everything you learn in your calculus mechanics or data structures course for extended periods of time the day or week before a final or interview, which is not only mentally taxing, but also detrimental to your health. Now, before I share the technique that I used in university, grad school, and that I still use today, let's quickly talk about how our brains store information. You probably noticed that whenever we play video games or watch a TV series, we remember everything without actually having to memorize anything. Things like space repetition, flashcards, notes, and active recall are never needed. Simply put, our retention levels are extremely high. Most of you will agree that we rarely hit that level when studying for an engineering exam. Formal education forces us to study and learn a certain way, and that's by sitting in class, listening to the professor lecture for two hours, take notes, read the textbook, do problem sets, and take exams. But this method just isn't conducive to memorization based on the way our brains are wired, so it's exceptionally hard to learn and retain concepts. The human brain has evolved to be really good at learning and solving problems, as we can tell by simply comparing ourselves to the species around us. But one thing that our brains are even better at doing is forgetting things because remembering things consumes so much energy that we would die if we remembered everything we saw. To understand how we can maximize retention, we have to look at the way our brains work. So when our brain processes information, it's either retained or forgotten. What determines which pathway it takes? If the information is relevant or you can relate to it in some way, then it's retained. And if it's irrelevant or isolated, then it's lost or placed into the recycle bin. Usually when we see information, the first thing we tend to do is memorize it or store it in our brains without connecting it to existing knowledge or forming relationships with other pieces of information. This is what I like to call the brute force method that's scientifically proven to be inefficient. A better way to do this is taking the information and thinking about how it's relevant to your life or things you know instead of memorizing it first. When we do this, not only is the information actually processed much faster, but you will understand it more deeply. This way of learning was very very counterintuitive to me when I first heard about it, but after trying it, it works like magic. I've learned that our brains won't memorize something just because we really want to memorize it. It only cares about relevancy and the relationships with other pieces of information that already exist in our brain. So if your whole focus is solely on memorizing information, it actually makes everything a lot harder. You need to build mental connections and create a web of knowledge so the information is naturally more memorable and makes more sense. This way of learning saved me tons of time when it came to relearning things, my active recall improved, and I could apply the knowledge more effectively on exams and during interviews. As an example, Let's just say we're trying to memorize and understand the heat conduction equation describing heat flow through a solid, liquid, or gas. Now, I don't know why we would memorize this equation in the first place since most professors provide formulas on exams, but let's just assume they didn't. The equation is Q dot equals K times A times T sub H minus T sub C over delta X, where Q dot is the heat transfer rate, K is the thermal conductivity of the material, A is the cross-sectional area, 
T sub H is the temperature of the hotter end, and T sub C is the temperature of the colder end, and delta X is the distance between the two ends. If we were to just start memorizing this equation with the brute force method, it will likely take us 10 minutes to memorize. Then after a day has passed, we will forget it, go back to look at it, memorize it, and the whole process will repeat for a week or two until we can fully retain it. Now, instead of memorizing it, what if we were to look at all the variables in the equation and try to relate them to reality or what we already know. We observed that the heat transfer rate Q dot or how fast or slow heat is transferred is proportional to the thermal conductivity, which is a material's ability to conduct heat. This actually makes a lot of sense if we think about different materials. Copper, which is a metal, is a really good conductor. Its thermal conductivity is around 400 watt per meter Kelvin. That's why it's used in kitchenware. Water is around 0.6. Wood falls between 0.1 and 0. 0.2 and air is the worst at around 0.0257. These are all considered insulators. That's why when we touch a metal rod versus a wood rod on a cold winter day, the metal rod will feel colder than the wood rod even though they are at the same temperature. The heat transfer rate is also proportional to area, which if we think about heat sinks used to remove heat from electronics and chips, there are a bunch of tiny fins used to maximize the surface area and contact with the surrounding air or water. The heat transfer rate is also proportional to the temperature difference delta T of an object. That might not make a lot of sense at first, but if we think of a cold winter day, it would definitely feel colder in the house if the outside temperature was say minus 20 degrees Celsius versus zero degrees Celsius if we did not turn the heat on because the house is losing heat at a faster rate. A pan also heats up much quicker if we turn the burner temperature to high versus low. Finally, the heat transfer rate is inversely proportional to the distance between the two ends of an object in the direction of the heat flow or delta x. Think of a time when you cooked with a thick pan versus a thin pan. Thick pans take a longer time to heat up and cool down due to a larger delta x, hence heat transfer occurs more slowly. That's why you always see Gordon Ramsay using a thick cast iron pan when cooking a steak. When the steak hits the pan, you don't want the pan to suddenly drop in temperature, which would affect the sear on the meat. Conversely, a thin pan heats up and cools down faster. So it's great for sauteing vegetables or making a sauce, but not so much for cooking thick pieces of meat. All of a sudden, this equation makes much more sense and sort of naturally becomes part of our memory because we see why it's important and how it manifests itself in our daily lives. Now remembering this one formula or equation may seem easy, but remember that as an engineering student, we have to learn hundreds of these formulas in addition to new concepts, definitions, theorems, you name it. So the point here is we need to first ask ourselves, how is what we're learning important and thinking about it in relationship to our experiences and what we learned in the past, say in physics or calculus class, instead of simply memorizing it first. The job of a professor is to teach us the material and based on my experience most professors only teach us the concepts and never explain why they're important or relevant. This makes forgetting things extremely easy so it's ultimately up to us to find different ways to help us retain the information for as long as possible. Now one other thing that transformed the way I studied and maximized my retention levels was Brilliant. The sponsor of today's video. I've been using Brilliant for almost 10 years now, and it's the best platform offering thousands of hands-on lessons in math, physics, programming, data analysis, and AI. What makes Brilliant so effective is their approach to breaking down problems into smaller thinking blocks that are easy to understand. Their lessons contain a plethora of interactive quizzes and visuals giving you the freedom to tinker with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lecture-based learning. All of Brilliant content is crafted by a distinguished team of professors, researchers, and professionals from places like MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you will be learning from the best. Brilliant champions problem solving over memorization, which enhances your critical thinking skills. This enables you to gain knowledge on specific topics while becoming a better thinker all at the same time. The best part about Brilliant is it promotes a habit of daily learning, which is so vital for both personal and professional growth. Learning doesn't 
doesn't have to be about boring lectures anymore with brilliance, fun, bite-sized lessons that fit into your schedule and offer you productive learning opportunities during your spare time. Scientific Thinking is a super practical course that I took on Brilliant that teaches you key scientific principles and theories from machines like gears and pulleys to Einstein's special theory of relativity. This course lets you build your natural intuition and learn by doing with lessons that have you comparing circuits to understand voltage and current, playing snooker to learn the rules of collision, and more. To try out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or check out the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Now we are all human and there will inevitably be things we forget and have to relearn no matter how good we are at maximizing retention and building connections between new and existing knowledge. So one method I leveraged to minimize the time I spent relearning things was spaced repetition, which you'll find all over the internet. And the goal of this method is to spread out your study sessions over time at increasing intervals, reinforcing your memory each time. So for example, you could review the material two days after your lecture, then increase it to four days, then seven days, etc., until you feel you've got it down to a T. Now, which technique you use to review the course material in each session matters a lot. One pitfall that a lot of students fall into when using spaced repetition is mindlessly rereading their notes or the textbook and thinking that they're going to see results. This is known as passive learning, which is the most inefficient way to learn, so try to avoid doing this. Instead, what really streamlined studying for me was using a mix of different techniques like active recall, so you're not just studying the same thing over and over again, but rather learning something from different angles. For me, picking out several problems to solve at the end of each chapter in my textbooks was probably one of the quickest and most effective ways of applying concepts I've learned and solidifying my understanding of them. Teaching and discussing the material with pairs was surprisingly another very super useful way to improve my retention and made the entire process much more enjoyable. Now, unlike studying for midterms and finals, mechanical engineering technical interviews are one of those things that can be totally unpredictable and impossible to study for. Companies tend to ask these very specific curveball questions that you would only be able to answer if you did a lot of interviews in the past or worked as a mechanical engineer in industry. So to help you guys out, I put together a list of 80 technical questions that I think are great to know and hopefully will help you land your next dream job. So for any of you who are interested, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. Hopefully after watching this video, you're able to up your game when it comes to learning new concepts and ideas for the first time and permanently retain them using the strategies we mentioned. While everyone is stressing out and cramming for exams and interviews, you'll be making fun of them and doing the things you love most. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about one of the most important skills for mechanical engineers. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.